Hello, my name is Kiana Harris, and I am Hub Coordinator and Trainer for Sunrise Movement Kansas City. We are one local hub of over 200 across the United States. Today, I'm going to be talking about youth engagement in relation to the climate crisis and what that looks like here in Kansas. The work that Sunrise does is to stop the climate crisis. What that means is that we push for comprehensive policies on the local, state, and federal levels. These are policies that set goals that reflect the scale and speed that we need in order to stop the climate crisis. It also ensures that we address everything that needs doing without leaving anyone behind. So some of those goals are to achieve net zero greenhouse gas emissions, to create millions of good high wage jobs, to invest in infrastructure and industry, to secure clean air and clean water, to foster a resilient, healthy food supply, to promote justice and equality. And these are big goals, but they have to be this big in order to address the climate crisis at the scale that is needed. These goals are in direct response to a report. If you're not familiar with it, there will be a link in the resources slide at the end. But essentially, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC for short, released a report in 2018 that said we have 12 years to drastically reduce emissions and address these issues, or we will begin to see extreme effects. That report was in 2018. In 2019, we have 11 years. In 2020, 10. In 2021, 9. We cannot afford to keep waiting around. At Sunrise, we prioritize the voices of the youth because it is the shape of their entire futures that are at stake. And right now, many of them are not 18. That means they cannot vote. They are not seen in our current policy making system. So they need to be shown that they have the power and agency to make changes now to have a livable future for everyone. So when it comes to champions fighting for the climate crisis through these comprehensive policies, it should be no surprise that it is the youth that leads us. In the House of Representatives, we have Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who is continuously pushing for policies that would work towards those goals. However, it is also an international movement. So we also have young people like Greta. Greta is a Swedish climate activist and she began Fridays for Future. She went and sat outside of her parliament every Friday instead of going to school. And she says, I want you to act as if the house is on fire because it is. Greta first started striking in August of 2018. Today, it has grown into an entire movement. This is Leia. She is a Ugandan climate activist and another leader of Fridays for Future. And she says, if adults are not willing to take leadership, I and fellow children will lead them. We also have Shie, who is a Mexican-American immigrant and another leader in Fridays for Future, as well as a member of Sunrise. And she says, we don't want people to suffer from the climate crisis to realize we are in a crisis. We also have Autumn, who is a member of a First Nations tribe and Canadian water rights activist. And she says, we can't eat money or drink oil. That is just to list four youth leaders, but there are so many. There are even famous young celebrities like Billie Eilish who are using their platform to help fight for climate justice. And in regards to climate justice, climate change isn't something that affects everyone the same. The communities that are being affected first are called frontline communities. These are communities on coastlines, in tropical areas, in black and brown neighborhoods, in poor neighborhoods. And this isn't a trend that is unique to Kansas or even the United States. As we saw with our youth leaders, this is something that is occurring globally as the effects of climate change become impossible to ignore. We have already begun to see climate refugees seeking escape from uninhabitable conditions. Other political and social tensions are also exacerbated by events like severe drought. This leads to food shortages, which leads to war and future conflict. So our youth leaders, young people, are seeing and living in these realities, and they are starting to speak
So here in Kansas City, we hosted the first ever climate strike that Kansas City has seen, and over 750 people attended. This is one way that we are giving youth the platform to make their voices heard. Whether it's through making signs to attend a rally, or taking the mic on stage and giving a fire speech, or even just showing up to the rally in solidarity with friends, we are creating ways for them to make their voices heard. And Sunrise also recognizes that fighting climate change, again, isn't just about planting more trees. It's about the real material impact that the effects of climate change is going to have on people's health and their lives. This is why we also partner with other community organizations fighting for justice as well. This includes social justice. It includes racial justice and economic justice. Climate justice is justice for all. We also talk to our representatives about the issues and we ask them to sign the Green New Deal pledge as a promise to fight for our future. In Kansas City, there have been several city level representatives that have signed the pledge as well. So we have champions fighting with us on the local level too. All of the work that we do is to create social change. In the United States, we have a democracy, which means that every person's vote counts. We want to move the conversation towards climate justice and equity. And again, that means to stand with other movements that are fighting for the same things in order to create a broad coalition. And youth empowerment is essential because right now many of them can't vote and yet they're going to be the ones dealing with the end results of decisions that are being made today. At Sunrise, we are also constantly experimenting and trying new things to figure out what works and will be most impactful. Our goal is mass mobilization. We will see people come together over a wide variety of issues that are impacted by the climate crisis because it does affect every factor of our daily lives, whether we realize it or not. And that means keeping in mind our frontline communities and uplifting youth voices. It's going to take addressing systemic inequalities in order to truly create a just, equitable, livable future without leaving anyone behind.